What's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of Becoming the 1% Podcast. Today, we're talking pickleball. Clayton Eckhart and David Haney come on. They talk about Pickleball Kingdom. We talk about its implications on mental health, the journeys that both of them have gone through to get to this point. They're actually launching the very first reality TV show focused around this new, uh, I call it an up-and-coming sport, but it's been here for so long, I would say re-emerging sport. How it has uh, bridged the gap between age, gender, just about every single category that we could ever find ourselves in. It's an amazing episode. Enjoy. Clayton, you guys. Welcome. Hey, thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for Thank you. Appreciate us. This is yeah. the coolest home gym by far, hey, by man. miles. It's serious. <laughs> it's insane, all, everything you guys got on the walls here. And on the floor. I didn't even look at the floor. I just come in and it's just... Oh, dude, the floor. I, I love what they did. That's actually a sticker. So that's a... It's a that's a sticker? It's a vinyl lay, just like a wow. truck. So the company's actually wrapping my truck next week. They did the floor and they're wrapping the machines. No, so okay. they're just it's a it's the coolest collaboration. It's a company called uh, Shout Out to Rap Sesh. They do I mean, they just went into uh, a competition where they won. They took a Ferrari and wrapped it like Harry Potter. Oh wow! <laughs> they do the most creative <laughs> like car wraps you've ever seen. Okay, they did a Guardians of the Galaxy Porsche. Ooh. They've done just some ridiculously cool stuff. But uh, yeah. No, the flooring's great. I, I think it ties the, the whole way together nicely. Sweet. Do you think they could get uh me and David wrapped as like superheroes, maybe on a on his car? A hundred percent. They'll do that. Totally. Oh yeah. That's I think I how think we sell so. it, man. So I, I think, think we so. both just get us superheroes on our faces on each of our cars. Ooh, which superhero we choose? That was a oof. Well, great I, I question. Said, I was I gonna that's Hulk. that's I the Hulk is my favorite. So. Take the Hulk. All right, we gotta switch then. Yeah. I was I was say, say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's your least. I feel like I won't be able to give my best performance if I got him sitting right there. <laughs> now I can embody. You know, there's actually a pretty good resemblance. The thing is the hair. He's busting out his curl. I think so. It's not really curl. He's more wavy. I don't try to relate that. Have you ever actually? Can you grow like a like a fro if you were to really go for it? Uh, so my hair actually will poof out. I went through like a skateboarder phase. Yeah, this is. I'm gonna sell myself out here, man. This is this is where you This is where you got to do. This is the perm. Wait, is it seriously? Yeah, I swear. Yeah. Where where do you where do you get a perm? I get one in just an old town Scottsdale, man. Wait, seriously? So my, my hair would curl at the end normally. And then I said, I just want to like, I had a buddy, his hair just does it naturally. I was like, you know, I'm going to try it. So I, I just got the whole thing. You know what it looks like? It what? looks like uh, Ben Stiller from um, Starsky and Hutch. I, 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 what I, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like this. I told you, man, when you start movie quoting, oh, he's going to pull it up. Dude, this is great. Come on. Oh, you're you're going to pull it up. So <laughs> oh, you got to do Starsky and Hutch. Do do it. Yeah, do it. Do, do it. it. Do what? Do it. <laughs> it's the great. I think in There's the movie. There's a Fred Finkelstein. It was it Finkelstein? In, what the, said? <laughs> in the movie, they actually get into a debate. Oh, that is not even. <laughs> Where is it? Not the oh, color. That's, yeah, okay. with the gun. <laughs> No, I got more twists. He's than got that. more twists. Come on now. There is more. He twists actually, there's a it, yeah. not there. It's kind of like not nothing. Yeah, yeah, but he gets it done like that at yeah. one point in oh, the film. Oh, he, he buzz on the side. He gets it short. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's great. All right, we're, I'm getting roasted right <laughs> out the yeah. Here we go. You, you. I'm so, surprised you actually just said it. You just said, "All right, guys." I tell everybody. You were uh, right. As soon as these things come on, everything. Oh yeah. Comes I would have denied if I was dead. <laughs> no man. I just, I just figure, I just, I just go ahead and say it right out the well, gate. If you're gonna do it, you might as well own it. I mean, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? So yes. you guys can only make fun of me for like another minute, and then it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you're starting a new trend right here today. I'm trying. I'm gonna bring it back, man. They said, uh, what the girl said, she goes, "There's been a couple guys that have come in and done this in the last few months, so something's in the water." Yeah. And it's, it's once I came out to Scottsdale, so I don't know what they're what they're doing here in Arizona. It's gonna happen. It it's wasn't going to here. Missouri though. <laughs> Just is, saying. is that where you're from originally? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nice. Twenty years of my life, so I moved out here about a year ago. What got you into reality TV? Oh man, uh, just that I put fitness hashtag. I put that when I first got Instagram, and then somebody found me. Uh, just hashtag fitness. They reached out. Gotcha. And I went on the Bachelorette, and then went on the Bachelor. So. So that you did that back to back. Yeah. Because I was, I, my mom downloaded me the entire story before I came on here. But she, so you she went, gave me the full inside scoop and all that. Did, she did. You're gonna have to clarify. I've never seen it. it, it, it are first, you are you concerned I might fall in love with you? Because that's, that's basically <laughs> I, I fell in love with everybody. <laughs> so the first one was you with a lot of guys all auditioning for one girl. That's Correct. the first one. Correct. And then the second, well, the role was reversed. Yes, I was then the guy with thirty women. Got, ooh, okay. Yeah. And now, is that typically the way that goes? You have to be on the one in order to get on the other? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Majority of the time. But gotcha. then every so often, there's exceptions. So 
Um, but yeah, I, I went from one to the next right away and, uh, was just, yeah, fell in love with everything, you know, yeah. the experiences, all the women, like the food, I was just throwing out love. Like it was going out. Of- <laughs> 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 this is a stupid question, but which of the two did you prefer? Which of what? The, being with, oh, well, between the two shows. Yeah. Between the two shows, which one did you prefer? Oh man. That's, I've never actually had anyone ask me that question. You're kidding. Um, wow. I, uh, you know, the thing is, is with a bachelorette, when there's all the other guys, it felt like kind of like lot football locker room. There's all the guys we're broing out. We had, we had, we had pool days. We, there was all these things that, that wasn't, weren't shown, but that we just like hung out. We just hang out. It's like sure. a giant frat house. Um, I didn't have that. Obviously when I was on the bachelor, I was basically <laughs> just in isolation kind of, and then I'd go hang out with the women and then go back to like my room. But I would say, obviously when you're, you know, the, the lead, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's unique. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I really just annoy my brothers. I tell them, you know, I used to say, I'm like, you realize there's been more U.S. presidents than there has been bachelors in the, in the country. There's I, only been 26 bachelors. Wow. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I didn't know that. So no. I, I just, it's completely <laughs> pointless, but I say that my brothers get so annoyed. They're like, it's not that important. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, it kind of is kind of a big deal. Yeah. It, well, uh, okay. So at the end of each show, obviously you're partnered up with someone in the first show when you were with the frat full of dudes i mean did you make it all the way to the end or did you get eliminated be- all before no i had uh not a super early exit but that was where there was a ton of um you know people frustrated i i, I was knocked out at number eight mm, okay so typically people in the top four someone gets chosen as the bachelor from like a top four mm. i was chosen in the top eight then there's a whole other slew of reasons but it was people already were you know i had a target on my back and Got then it. I just go ahead. I took that target and said, Hey, I'll just put it on my front and everywhere else as well. I just basically <laughs> blew it up for everybody to just come after me. And, you know, but I, uh, again, silver lining. I found a lot of good stuff. Did, from it all. did you find that a lot of guys on that show were like in campaign mode to become oh, an yeah. ex batcher? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is where they say for the wrong reasons. There's, there's like a tagline like, Who's here for the right reasons and wrong reasons? And, there were guys right out right the gate. I mean, just basically, they were. It's like they were. They were, became like interviewers. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And why do you care so much to ask these questions? Well, it's because they were just trying to be on screen as much as they could. Mm. They figured the more I talk, the the more likely I am to this this is to make the cut. You know, because you film for 14, 15 hours a day, but then, you know, it's like only two hours are shown, and that's usually each episode is like four days of filming. So it's a small fraction. So yeah. the guy's like, hey, the more I talk, more likely I'll be on TV. Got it. And at the end of the second show, when you actually, obviously, you are the main and you end up with one individual, did that actually turn into a real relationship that went the distance or what happened? Yeah, well, this is where things get sticky, man. <laughs> so I, I basically, I was the first bachelor left alone at the end of it. <laughs> Wait, well, that can happen? Yeah, well, it did in my case because you don't, you shouldn't fall in love with, I guess I set the record, fall in love with three women at once. I thought I fell in love with four, but they didn't show that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you know, we're going to go with three. I was like, I did say, though, I was feeling love with this fourth person. They said, it's three. You're going to go with three. Um, so it was, I was just all out of whack. But but basically, yeah, I, I ended up dating, uh, Susie was her name. Um, and I dated her for a year after the show. Okay. So it was it was fruitful. I mean, it was tough. We, we went through a lot of, st- it's when you have a public relationship, it is, I mean, it's just, there's so many expectations and people are always, when are you going to have kids? You know, when are you going to get married? And you feel that pressure nonstop. And, sure. and then you think if this doesn't work, I'm a failure. And everything mm-hmm. that we did up until this point is a failure. So that was a lot of strain on the relationship and just, you know, compatibility as well. And ultimately we went our separate ways, but I would still say it was successful because yeah. she taught me a lot to chase my dream. She kind of pushed me out of corporate America and was like, you should chase after these, you know, your fitness dreams and speaking on mental health. And so she was the one that encouraged me to do it. So uh, so I would say ultimately it was for the better. Yeah. Where did the train? Sorry, Jake, did you, I was just going to ask him about hometowns. Cause that's the most awkward part. I think of the bachelors when you got to go meet, you you narrow it down to like three or four, right? Three, four, four. And mm-hmm. then you got to go meet their families in their hometowns and you stay with them for a bit. And oh, so great. I was going to ask you, what was your experience <laughs> like with hometowns? Well, I just thought it was, it, it, was, it was smooth sailing. You know, I, I, it was funny because one of the parents, they were, they were really trying to freak me out a little bit. They're like, you know, he's a tough one to crack. And, uh, you know, he's apparently not really happy or like excited to see you. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's fine. They're like, are you, are you, are you nervous? I was like, no. What's, what, like, what's he going to do? Swing on me? I mean, <laughs> like, wow, he's just not really happy. You know, he's really protective of his daughter. I'm like, good. That's, that's great. That's a sign of a good dad. If you ask me, yeah. so I'm sure we'll head it off. And, uh, and we did. So I, I, I didn't have any issue you know, talking to the parents. I was like, nah, I wasn't concerned about that. Um, and then the questions, of course, they're like, you know, they're going to ask you, 
you know, hey, like, how do I know you're not going to hurt my daughter? Because mm -hmm. there's other women here. And I was like, it's just a really simple answer. I was like, of course, someone's going to get hurt. I mean, I can't tell you because I don't know who I'm going to end up with. But it's, those are the kind of weird conversations that, that you wouldn't have in real life. I mean, where is that ever going to be okay? Like, <laughs> you're dating my daughter, people. but you're also dating three other women. You're like, yeah, listen, I'm going to have it. You know, my deadline is two weeks. So Certain places in Utah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I've made that joke a few times. But, yeah. You know, uh, good old Utah. And they're looking for a guarantee that you're going to stay with their daughter, basically. Yeah. They're like, they're like, you know, how do I know? Like, what can you promise me like that, that you won't hurt my daughter? I'm like, I can't. And so then you just sit there in silence for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, all right, cool. Yeah. Well, why the transition to mental health? How did that happen? And, and why, why make it? Um, well, for me, I have struggled with my mental health since seventh grade. That's kind of when things started to surface. And then they manifested into adulthood in different ways. So I kind of suppressed a lot of the things that I struggled with growing up. It really just boiled down to not feeling good enough. So um, I, I was raised in a household of, of, you know, me and my two brothers, uh, my brother, who's um, you know, two years younger than me, was a superstar athlete. Uh, so he was, you know, kind of got all the attention. And it wasn't like I was neglected. But in my eyes, I felt neglected because I saw how much attention he received. Mm. So I was comparing his attention to my attention. Um, and, you know, when you're a kid, all you have is is really is a athletics. You have academics, but I didn't care too much about that. Um, and then you have your friendships, relationships. And so I was, you know, he was on varsity as a freshman. I was on JV as a junior for football. So, of course, my younger brother's starting varsity while I'm on JV. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't feel good enough in that realm. And then uh, I was called big brother by all the girls. They all friend zoned me. Uh, I was a nice kid. I just, you know, didn't have that, that sex appeal at all. Um, <laughs> and I just talked my way out of every single, you know, interaction with a girl if they were interested in me. Uh, so those two things, that was all I had as a kid and I just never felt good enough. And so then I went on this whole journey trying to prove to people that I was finally good enough. Um, that led to me going to the NFL, you know, briefly, but like, I just kept trying to show people like, Oh, I'm in the NFL. Maybe now I'll be a good enough athlete. And then I didn't realize it, but going on the bachelor was kind of my way of trying to be like, look, I'm finally the most sought after man in America. So I'm, I'm now, I'm no longer big brother. You know, that was kind of like, I didn't realize I was doing it, but I was chasing the external validation all the way through my entire life. And then after the show, I still didn't feel good enough. And that's when I had to just step back. I went to a therapist and I was having these conversations and I realized, I'm like, man, you've done all of this and you still don't feel good enough. When are you going to finally feel good enough? Because I look at people that haven't done either of these things. Not that these are like, they mean a whole lot, but what is it going to take for you to finally feel good enough? And then I just realized, I was like, that's just your choice. I just have to wake up and choose that confidence. I have to choose that self-love. So yeah, this whole experience and then just being... You think that's a common thread amongst men? I mean, the feeling of, inag of inadequacy? Well, I would say, yes. I would say that there's the expectations that, you know, we're supposed to be the providers. At least that's I, that's the way I was raised in a household was not so much by my parents, but society in general. Like, I'm supposed to be the protector. I'm supposed to provide financially. You know, I'm supposed to... And then now with comparison culture, social media, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be better than everybody else that I see on here because... I'm up against everyone across the world. It's not even your own hometown anymore for dating. It's like, I got to compete against guys, you know, that, that are, that are on the East coast, the West coast, because mm -hmm. again, everybody now with p transportation, I'm thinking back, like think back a hundred years ago, you didn't, you know, how old are you? I'm 30. Nice. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing back <laughs> the idea. guy in this room. Oh, oh I'm saying a hundred <laughs> because I'm like, you know, this it used to be, you could only date people in your hometown. Sure. You know, you transportation years and years and years ago, you didn't have planes, you didn't have, you know, automobiles that so now all of a sudden, like the dating pool has opened up so much. And so I feel like there's this pressure where, you know, we're comp like, we feel like we're competing to be the best, mm -hmm. because that's what we feel. We don't want to lose that person that we end up with, because it's like, but nowadays, there's so many options, there's dating apps. And it's just, I think there's a lot of pressure on everybody to just mm -hmm. they feel like they have to be better than everybody else. Because if they're not, they think they're gonna get passed up. But mm -hmm. I should ask you all that. I mean, is I think that a lot of men struggle with inadequacy. But I mean, how do you all feel as fellow men? Go ahead. Please. I would say, um, yeah, being the oldest <laughs> and wise one here. You, know, um, <laughs> you got me beat on that. Yes. Yeah, I do have that. Um, no, I think that they, they do. I think there's this. Everything's just put in your face now. It's uh, the social media aspect of stuff definitely plays into it. Um, you know where you know. You never just worry about the high school boy reaching out to your girl later, you know, 20 years down the line, you know, couldn't find her. But in the olden days, now everything's so readily available to you. You, mm -hmm. know, you know, everybody's, are they looking for the, always the next best thing, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And well, until you find the right one, like I have, mm -hmm. um, 
you don't worry about the next best thing anymore, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, I think everybody's just really worried about those things. Yeah. You know, when you look at it. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's shared amongst everyone, both <clears throat> men and women in different ways. I, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the physical image competition part is probably more so for women, more so than for guys. I mean, we, to a degree, sure. I guess you physically compare yourself to others around the world or other guys on social media, other, but I think uh, like to what you said, when it comes to actual relationships and the pool just keep getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, everybody feels like they have way more options than they really do. Yeah. And everybody thinks, I mean, there's, there's like, there's a lot of stuff, you know, clinical depression is through the roof because everybody yeah. feels like their life pales in comparison to somebody else's. Yeah. When in reality, I mean, no one has a perfect life No. and they're showing you their best moments with a filter and it's, it's, <laughs> right. it's, the to, it's to make yeah. you feel terrible. Yeah. Well, and I found too, this was something that I found actually really interesting. So when I came off the show and then once uh, my ex and I broke up, you know, there was a day where I was sitting down talking to one of my buddies that also went on the show and, you know, he had about, he got just as much airtime as I did. So everything was mostly equivalent, but well, he shows me his DMS and they're just flooded. I mean, just models and girl, all these very, very attractive women. And I look at it and I was like, man, he's like, I'm sure you get the same thing. I was like, not at all. Uh, and he's like, you don't, I'm like, no, he's like, we were the bachelor. I was like, no, dude, my DMS are, are dead. Um, but then what I found was I was so open about my mental health and I was just talking about my, you know, my, my struggles openly. And it was showing people that I didn't have, like I hadn't mastered that self-love or confidence. Mm -hmm. And so because I didn't have that confidence, I was pushing people away. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know this to be true because now I'm exuding the confidence. Now I'm starting to feel it. And I've been feeling it for you now probably four or five months where I've come to this place where I'm like, I love who I am. I love what I, I'm just doing everything that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really care what people think. I'm just going to be authentically me. Complete 180. Now all of a sudden, you know, tons of you know people in my DMs interested. And I found that it was like when I was talking about my struggles openly, it was pushing people away. But, you know, to the right people, you always bring them closer to the wrong people you push yeah. away. So I had to remind myself of that. But it is true. I mean, people, you know, partners, especially like they want to be with someone who's confident. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, if there's someone's insecure, they're going to go, OK, well, that insecurity is probably going to rub off on me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a delicate balance. I mean, I realized as I was sharing my story, um, you know, it was it was bringing people closer that also felt insecure and alone. And so they felt like they could relate. But on the same front, as I was trying to find someone to, you know, build a relationship with, it was almost like, well, this guy's he's got a lot of issues he's and he's very open about it do i want to be a part of this mm -hmm. um and so it made it kind of tough and so i was feeling more alone trying to build a relationship like an intimate relationship but i was feeling more accepted by just people that were reaching out saying you're really helping me out with my mental health struggles and yeah. so i was like where's the balance at um and i think well i think that's your balance you know when yeah. you look at the opportunities you have to do self you know correction or, or really dive into yourself mm -hmm. you have to have that almost on an island alone you got to go through that opportunity you got or go through those moments to be able to really delve in or dive into yourself yeah you know things happen after you know i got divorced my kind of thing was you know i finally worked out my issues mm -hmm. and then realized who i was and realized things that you know started way back when i was a kid that really affected me throughout life and then not until that i figured me out was i able to be ready for anybody else yeah you know and then once i was able to be ready everything else opened up, you know, even the relationships you have or the connections you start to build now are from your self correction and you're going to see life just really change. And for my wife and I, we did the same thing. Both of us, i never would have met her if I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't be in this position I am now if I wasn't ready for that moment then, mm -hmm. you know, and so, and I'm hugely grateful for what I had to do for myself to take that time, yeah. to, you know, just for myself. And I think as guys, you know, I don't think, I think we get that, that tough guy mentality where, you know, I, I can't look at my feminine side or that, that side of me that, you know, I don't want to touch because it scares me, mm -hmm. you know? And, but when you finally just accept it and finally just really start to figure out that part of your life, mm -hmm. it opens everything else up yeah. and it's been incredible and relationships are stronger. Business is stronger. It really just changes everything about it. Yeah. And, and showing vulnerability makes us relatable ultimately. Sure. Because right? everyone can relate to failure. Everyone can relate to, you know, the ups and downs of life. So, you know, if we can show that side of us, I think it, it, we might not have as many relationships as far as volume goes, but I think they're deeper and more mm -hmm. enriching relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. A thousand percent. I mean, the conversations I've had these days are almost every one of them, I feel like I'm growing because I'm going, levels and levels deeper than the surface level you know it's, it instantly people realize oh i can talk to him about mental health i can open up i can talk about 
you know, he's talked about body dysmorphia. He's talked about suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety. So if I cast that out, then everyone goes, okay, he's been so vocal and open about it. And so I will get a lot of people that'll just message me randomly and mm -hmm. they feel more comfortable talking to me because I've already admitted that out that like, Hey, listen, I'm willing to have these conversations, but a lot of people don't want to have those conversations with, with, you know, individuals close to them because they're afraid I may ostracize this relationship. Mm -hmm. So in a yeah. way they find comfort and those strangers because they go, well, if I bury this relationship, it's just stranger anyways. And I don't have to wake up every day and maybe see them in my office or, you know, around my town. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. yeah. When we're dealing with stuff that's so close to home, especially with regards to trauma or anything in that entire category, a lot of times it's the people that are closest to us that we do not want to bring that up to because they're still going to be there. And now they're going to know this about me and yeah. I'm never going to unknow it. Right. What are some very practical ways that you've learned can combat this type of thing? I mean, obviously we all have a background in fitness. That's got to be in there. You mentioned therapy. I mean, is there, am I on the right track there? What, yeah. what do you, what do you do when someone tells you they're dealing with this stuff? So for me, um, and I, I wrote a book and I, I really just kind of go back to that point. Cause that's, that's how I started to really address 180 degrees, 180 degrees. There it is. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, my shout out my brother that took that picture in his apartment complex when it first came out here. Look at that. Oh, look at that incredibly straight hair. Serious. <laughs> That's before <laughs> the perm. That, that was say. before the perm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think 180 degrees is referring to the hair. The hair. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was good. Okay, I'll give that right. one to you. Um, but no, I mean the, the book, I laid it out with six principles. I divided it by, you know, yeah, 180 degrees divided by six, 30 degrees at a time. And so for me, as I overcame this place, uh, again, the 180 goes from, I was walking down a place of self doubt, you know, and, and, and just, I, I was like, how am I going to renavigate my life to go down a place of self belief and self love? Hmm. And so I talk about these six principles, each divvied up and how they build upon each other. So the first one's communication. Uh, and I started with communication because that's the, the first thing I'm like, we, we, the struggle that we have a lot of individuals is we just suppress everything and we just think, okay, the more I suppress it, I'll just push it farther, farther and down and it'll go away, but it doesn't go away. It just, it just basically another rainy day happens and then it all bubbles up. And eventually like we hit our tolerance and that's where you have the explosion. Somebody does something drastic. Um, so I talk about, you know, communication, like you can start that right now. You know, you, we can have this conversation in this exact moment. Um, and then, you know, so that's something that you can do right away, then education. So then going and seeking the information, cause it's all out there. Mm. I mean, with our phones, it's like uh, you can type anything in and instantly get access and start to dive deeper. So we need to educate ourselves. And then beyond those points, I talk about preparation. So just building up, um, you know, a, whatever practice you find that works for you, starting to prep for it, then determination, sticking with it. Then congregation, I talk about, you got to have your support system. I mean, we can't go out life alone. Mm -hmm. um, but, but again, as we get farther along in this path of congregation, you can't just start congregation right now. That's, that's a support system that it takes time to build. And the final one is realization, which again, realizations to come through experience that takes time, but you know, you'll start to realize all these different things as you, you know, do the, the previous five things over and over and over again. So I just tell people just start talking about it and then start researching it. Um, as far as specifics, I mean, again, what works for me not, may not work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell people, yeah, sure. Journaling worked, therapy worked. Um, you know, uh, but like, is, I, I is it going to work for somebody else? Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the overarching thing is just being mindful. So just questioning everything you feel, why not? You know, I don't want to get into a place of like where people are like, they, they, they question everything to the point where they can't, they can't be present. But I think, you know, at the beginning and end of the day, somebody should say, okay, where's my current emotional state at? You know, and then at, maybe at the end of the day, where's it at? And mm -hmm. did it change? Okay. It changed. Well, why is that? Mm -hmm. What are the things I woke up super happy? I'm going to sleep sad. So let's now take that time to reflect. You should try to stay present as much as you can throughout the day, but I think we should still reflect upon the past and look toward the future. Those are, that's where you have those reflection periods, those epiphanies and that growth. Um, but it's the balance because I think a lot of times all of us get stuck in our heads in, in present day, but we start thinking of the past and mm -hmm. the future. And then that causes analysis paralysis. We don't take any action at all. So it's that delicate balance of like living presently when you're you know, going through your day. And then when you have those quiet times reflecting on the past and future. Well, so much of our pain and suffering is in our imagination. It's reflecting mm -hmm. on things that happen that aren't happening now or mm -hmm. worrying about things that haven't happened yet. Fear of yep. what could happen. Yeah. 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 Which 100%. is crippling for yeah. some people. I mean, they never, they never get out of it. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't even happened yet. Yeah. Right. It's, you know what I mean? Like, like either it happened and it's done yeah. and now it's, you're yeah. done or you're so worried that something like it'll happen again that you can't move past it. Yeah. But to overcome that too, like I found I had to just be paying attention to the times when I was stressing out. So like I can give an example of, 
you know, something minor is I think it's important that these minor things actually are actually are major. So there was a day where um, I was a little behind on schedule and I was going to get be late to my office meeting. You know, I'm in real estate. And so that we had an office meeting at 9 a.m. And I was going to be there at like 9.03. I type mm -hmm. in the GPS, it says 9.03. The entire drive, I'm stressing out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not, you know, I'm going to walk in. Everyone's going to turn and look at me. My boss is going to be upset. Like you can't even make it on time. You know, and then he's, the more times I do that, if I do it again, like I'm going to be on thin wire. And so the entire time I'm gripping the steering wheel, I'm, you know, freaked out. I'm, I'm racing in between lanes. So now I'm driving kind of reckless, you know, uh, and I'm putting myself in harm's way and, and I'm thinking negative thoughts and I showed up and the, the me meeting was canceled. <laughs> so those moments like that is when I realized I'm yeah. like, you know what, if you'd have just lived present, you would have said, okay, I'm going to be three minutes late. That is what it is. Yeah. And so once I show up, however, my boss reacts, whatever people do, we'll just deal with it then. Mm -hmm. But I created this whole scenario and you know put myself in danger driving around like a madman yeah. you know just for the meeting to not even be there and i realized i'm like wow i gotta stop doing this because yeah. that's just a perfect example of something that never happened but i've created this whole scenario out mm -hmm. of thin air 100 mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah so pickleball that is a thing we like, we like pickleball. We like yeah. pickleball. We love like pickleball. Well, <laughs> let's well, we like it. I, I love what it stands for. I, I get frustrated about my playing, but that's that's. Speaking of frustrating things that haven't happened yet, it, 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 <laughs> how exactly did you guys get hooked up? And what, where, where exactly did your? I mean, are you new to the to the sport? Very, Obviously, yeah, David, yeah. you're not. <laughs> you, you, Clayton's very new to Clayton's very new. <laughs> yes, Clayton's very new. Just give me what's, a paddle. You'll be let's start. Top. Let's start with you, David. What's what's your background in this? I mean, how long have you been playing it? And how did this? Tell me about what's about to happen. What's about to happen? So, uh, pickleball paddle battle is about to happen. Um, I've been in pickleball now forty years. Believe it or not. Uh, started back in 1983 in my junior wow. high up wow. in Washington State. Yeah, they put it in as a PE sport, right. you know, and then they put courts outside. So we would go play at lunchtime and everything. And then, you know, wooden paddles and white balls back in the day, mm -hmm. you know. And, well, then people would put sports courts in the backyards. Well, the lines are the same lines as a badminton court. Roughly, the kitchen's a little deeper than you pick a ball. But, yeah, I just learned to play. Grew up playing the game, you know. And then just as life went on, I always kind of got back to pick a ball. You know, friends would get back and play. And, and then... uh in 2018, a buddy of mine, uh, Kevin Dorsey, I'll put his name out there. Yeah. Uh, our <laughs> our moms went to high school together, so we've known each other our whole lives. You know, so he moves down to Arizona from Washington State because I'm down here, and uh, he starts talking about pickleball. I said, "Man, I haven't played last few years. Didn't know where to go. So find an app, find a local place that's a little close to me." May 3rd, 2018. From that point on all pickleball i thought this is going i got to get back into this it was a good release for me it's kind of at that time i was going through some of my own struggles okay i had just gone through a divorce and it was my outlet you know a yeah. way to get out there and do stuff well then i fell in love with it again and just saw the direction it was going so i started coaching teaching and uh playing professionally and by 2019 i was full-time pickleball coaching you know within eight months i had over 650 clients it, it was ridiculous <laughs> wow. this wow. thing was just exploding and i saw where it was going uh, and that's when I. Why, why does that happen? That's one of the biggest questions I wanted to make sure I got out. Why do you think there's been this? Because I know the game. I mean, the game is super old, but it yeah. never had popularity like it has now. And it no. seems like even in the last like year, for some reason, it's just blown up. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's a uh, hundred and what fifty six percent. So I look at the numbers again. Growth in just the last year. Is it? It's, it's just ridiculous. It's yeah. We have over thirty five wow. million players across the nation. You wow. know, and you know, we did a, a thing on how many courts are available across the u.s versus how many players i think it was like ten thousand to one you know <laughs> players the courts i mean we're just, it's just a need of it so the reason the big boom happened you know eight years ago the average age in pickleball was 77 years old right yeah so it was more of a senior game uh well then just younger crowds just started getting into it and kind of the perfect storm when we went to the, the you know 2020 mm -hmm. you know and having our, yeah. our pandemic uh people needed something to do well Pickleball is a very inexpensive sport, so you can get out there on the court with a paddle and a ball, mm -hmm. you know, and you can start playing, you know. And so people just started doing that. They started getting hooked, and it's a game that anybody can play, mm -hmm. you know. And if you look at demographically, percentage of men to women playing sports, it's 53% men, 47% women. So it's really balanced, 
you know, so everybody's getting out there to playing. And yeah. Our young youth are getting into the programs now, and there are a lot of youth programs. It's getting to high schools. Colleges are now starting to put teams together, and uh, we're predicting 2028, 20, 2032 Olympics on this thing. Wow. And the, so the thing I really like about it, and I think that really sets it apart from, like, tennis is the community aspect. It's mm -hmm. so like you go to – I go to Gilbert Regional, mm -hmm. and at, like, nighttime – it's just completely Family. packed and you've got you're, you're meeting people that you've never met before because you're challenging them in doubles or whatever right and you don't get that in a lot of other racket sports i mean it's like you're you're mingling with people you're meeting people um you're getting to know them i think that's such a cool aspect and a unique aspect of pickleball when you compare it to other racket sports oh absolutely the community aspect can, of it is huge because a lot more people can play yeah not a lot of people can play tennis at the same level no like tennis absolutely. is or at the divide. same or at the same time because think of the court size i mean the court sizes are such so so much smaller for pickleball right. mm -hmm. you can pack a lot of people a lot closer together and get a lot of people moving through the courts quicker yeah i mean we get a little compared to tennis a lot just because of the look you know, and mm -hmm. a lot of tennis players are coming over. Well, you can put four pickleball courts on one tennis court. Yeah. So you can have 16 people playing versus four, yeah. you know, and and you're in a smaller area. So, yeah, the whole social aspect of it just took off. And the community, it is community. It brings people out. You know, you get out there and now people are no longer on their cell phones and doing stuff. They're on the court playing and, you know, they're out there getting a sneaky workout because in half hour you don't realize. Oh, and getting your ass, is, uh, you're getting your ass <laughs> kicked by you. As you mentioned like 47 percent women. I mean, it's the it's the most it's the, it's the sport that crosses over the, the gender line, I think, the most. Yeah. I mean, of everything I've ever done. I've never consistently gotten my ass kicked more by women that are 20, <laughs> 30 years older than me than, than that, than pickleball, uh -huh. nothing. Not anything else in my entire life has it ever even been close to that because it's such a game of technique and finesse. It's not like, I mean, <laughs> you were just like, Clayton, you want to talk about go that? Go out there <laughs> and try to hammer fist it. It doesn't help. That's why I'm just smiling over here and keeping it quiet. <laughs> No, I mean that's what exactly what I'm I'm learning right now, and it's it's been you know my ego has really stepped in the way because it's I'm sitting here and I'm getting whooped up on by people that are, you know, twice my age, and I'm just I'm like what is going on, and and I'm missing the ball, and I, and it's just, you know, it's one of those things. I, I think the reason why it's picked up though, why why it does it's, it does so well is because you can really teach somebody at least the basics within an hour, and so mm -hmm. it's a low barrier to entry. Um, and that's, you know, typically with most sports, it's going to take time to get decent. But, yeah. you know, as long as you're playing with people that are in your same you know expertise level, you can pick up that game within an, an hour. Yeah, and um, absolutely. And I, I mean, I picked up the game in an hour. But as far as, you know, get, then I start playing people that have been playing for a while. And man, it's just, it just, <laughs> the, Dude, yeah, I, 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 I got to tell you, though, easy to our, learn, difficult to master. Yeah. Yeah. Our second game in. Yo, know, Clayton was feeling pretty good winning his first one. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we did come from behind, but we we made it happen. So we happened. Second game, we get on the courts with these two ladies, Randy and Lynn. And Lynn Smith, uh, bless her heart, I, I'm not gonna say her age, but she's over seventy. Uh -huh. Let's just say she's uh, there, and they're so excited because Smoky they got they got Clayton well, I the bachelor. Think, I don't think I knew that. So yeah, I, think she's in her, I thought she was in her sixties. So way to way to up the age there. Clayton the bachelor on the court, and they're all excited. And, Next thing you know, they're up on us. And we're like, come on, Clay, we cannot close. We got to close this out, man. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> well, and I can feel the pressure whenever you know, he'll kind of, I mean, he's very encouraging. But it'll also like once we start getting down by a lot, he'll he'll step up his level of play, uh -huh. and so I know that I'm really lagging when we're down by six. He scores six points straight, and he's like, "All right, we only we're even now. We just need two points." <laughs> he's lunging in I'm, front of you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> got it. It's, 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 it's just becomes a game. two on one, and I'm just hanging back. I'm like, "I'll get the deep ones." <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. Yeah. It's the most addicted to a game. A new. It's it's funny how it's you, you sometimes think, hey, there's no way that I'm gonna like find anything that I like this late in life or anything that I haven't tried yet. But th that that's definitely the thing that I took to the fastest most recently. Yeah. Well, that is a great point because what we're finding people that are coming back and playing sport again. You know, a lot of people haven't been out there on the courts or doing something for a while, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're like, hey, I can get into this. And then we got these old athletes that come out and oh, they have found their world now. It is now game on i can oh, now yeah. be competitive again yep i can be I can excited about something you know and i can relive the glory days but today you know and so yeah ex racquetball players ex tennis player i oh, got a yeah. buddy that was a tennis pro and he loves pickleball he's addicted he's playing like four he calls me 
6 a.m. He's like, I played 14 games this morning at Pickleball Kingdom. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you had, you'll have Andre Agassi. You know, they got these prof, old professional tennis players come out and play in Pickleball. And I think one of the quotes he said was, I finally found something I can improve on or I can get better at. You know, that then I was at the top of my game in tennis. You know, right. Now he can yeah. get something back in there and, and do it again. You know, and I think level one of the quotes they said is, uh, um, you know, ten, tennis players always thought that Pickleball was where, you know, tennis players would go to die. You know, that's kind of where they end up. And he did a national, you know, competition against um, John McEnroe and Michael Chang. And, and uh, they get on the courts and it's live. And then after they, they won. And then the last thing he said was, you know, if there's going to be one thing I'm doing, I'm going to be on these courts. This is where I'm going to die. Yeah. You know, it's yep. pickleball right there. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of a good boost for pickleball. The tennis players are seeing it as something they can do. Totally. Long term. And what exactly is paddle battle? What, what's it going to be? I can see the clock is literally counting down. Well, what is it? Yes, we are counting down. So we've got, uh, so Pickleball Paddle Battle is going to be the first Pickleball reality TV show, okay, that we, go. Uh, we are going to have 16 competitors, eight men, eight women come in and compete um, for the chance to win um, one male, one female will win a pro contract for a year sponsored by Pickleball Kingdom. Uh, and the other exciting thing is, is two contestants, contestants are also going to win a franchise so two of them will win and it's going to be done by audience vote you know so we're going to give away two franchises a part of that so sick. yeah that's wow. pretty sick wow that's you know? a heck of a prize yeah. yeah so we're getting those entrances right now people are excited about it you know what it'll do to change their lives so you know really this whole thing is really about dreams you know building dreams building opportunities for people down the line um to be able to give them something that they couldn't do themselves, yeah. you know, and you know, we're seeing some of the incredible stories that we're seeing just come on these submissions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to be fun to really choose to get down and find the 16 we're going to work with and, and make it happen. How are you choosing the 16 you're going to work with? So each person right now is submitting. Uh, we have four questions that they answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, live, we want them to do a video and then they show us some, you know, clips of them playing and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be selected by a, a group of individuals that are going to, uh, I mean, it's a reality show. So we're looking for not only great talent, but we're looking for personality. personality. Yeah, we yeah. Want, <laughs> want some villains. We want some drama. You know, we want to we wanna create some opportunity there. Yeah. Just, the what, behind the scenes. Are you, are you doing hometowns? <laughs> 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 Exactly. What, are the, what are the questions you said there's four questions yeah you, so uh you can scroll up there you know some of the questions that we have on here is you know why what do you love about pickleball why pickleball you know that people are doing actually you go go into the submission like if you were to yeah scroll up a little bit apply yeah apply. you have to understand that jake is very slow is he to technology <laughs> all right so scroll up a little bit oh and that guy there that's okay i got to talk about the the guy there you know that's on me. the on the right hand on the right that's me I, I, yep, that's me right there. Um, so, Heck yeah. Uh, I got to talk about kissy face. So I get this kissy face when right. I play. And uh, photographers love capturing me in the moment when uh, that happens all the time. So <laughs> I do have, that's my kissy face uh, on it. So, uh, but if you scroll down, it'll, it'll ask those questions for you there. You know, it's right there. Um, uh, how would winning the event or being awarded a franchise change your life? Mm -hmm. You know, and these, again, dreams. We're lucky. We're talking about people that want to change. You know, what can we provide them? Sure. Um, and then we've got you know why I should be a contestant. Um, one of my favorites is this next one: is what are you willing to do uh, to <laughs> win? Like a loaded event? question. Oh my gosh, it has been. It Man, has I bet been you've bizarre. got some answers. Well, we we have some answers on that. Like know? who's is Clayton the one asking me this? Because that because that may be a different answer. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a perm. I'll get a I'll perm. Get a perm. I'll get a perm. <laughs> Fly right off the leaderboard. That is Just like that. Are you looking for certain ratings and above, or any rating works? Well, right now, for some is anything. You know, because okay. right now, pickleball and ratings is so interesting. There's so many different rating factors going in. And so, um, self rate to duper USAPAs, I mean, it's kind of all over the board. Mm. And so, right now, we are seeing, and we're seeing some pretty high submissions coming in, you know, above five O's. You know, um, there are some good ones at the four over level that we're seeing as well. Um, again, it's talent and personality and what they can bring to uh, this type of a show that we're looking for. But uh, that willing, what are you willing to do is, I can't wait to show some <laughs> clips once we get these yeah. things done. I've had people down to their underwear running around the court. You know, I mean, it's crazy what they're sending in. <laughs> and, so. is, and when it goes live, is that where episode one happens? Have you already shot any of this? Kind? It had, nothing's been no, shot yet. Nothing been shot yet. Um, is it all in Arizona? September is that where 16th. Yeah, September 16th to the 24th. All at Pickleball Kingdom in Chandler, Arizona. Ooh, okay. uh, yeah. We're doing all indoor, our indoor facility there. It's going nice. to be done uh, 12 hours a day is what we're, we're shooting wow. at as far as wow. filming. 
Um, so you're going to annex a certain part of the facility will be only for the show. I so that's the thing is where the, the struggle we're having right now is as we do this show, you know, I'm going to have people in the club during some of the daytime stuff. You yeah. know, so you're going to have yeah. them. You can't say what's going on. So we're going to have to be quiet as far as the eliminations and who's not, you know, stepping in and playing right now. Um, but the ultimate eliminations are going to be late at night when nobody's in the facility. Sure. So we're yeah, going to be I filming that, that 10 to 12, one o'clock in the mornings. And, uh, you know, we're going to make these people tired. They're going to have to earn, you know, the, the winning, you know, trying to win this. Hey, so, David, if yeah. I beat you in a singles match, do I jump up in the leaderboard at all? Is it, um, sure. If, if that's what we're doing, we'll put you in. Yeah. Okay. Are we going singles <laughs> match? I'm just curious. I like it. What happens if you lose? I think yeah, that's a great I'll, question. I'll, I'll answer just, one of those questions. You'll answer one of those questions. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? <laughs> You just, you take, well, it's Eli. You take so. his job. That, I take his, yeah. Yeah. right. Takes I take over. his uh, pay for the week. There you go. Perfect. There you go on there. Nice. That's a fair trade off. I like it. Yeah, Eli, we have been on the courts. Yeah, you get you back on the courts. Perfect. Definitely. Because you guys said you played against each other, right? Or against or with or. So I played against David. Now, in your defense, your partner was not the best. Um, I don't know if you remember this game. Do you remember the game I'm talking um, about? Keep it going. I, mean, I was I was trying to put it all together, and I'm like, Where, when was that happening? He's like, he's like yeah, all my partners are all my the best. Partners are the best. <laughs> and it seems to be a, like a routine. Or it seems to be a, something I work with. Okay, got it. So, um, no, we played two games with the same partner. Uh, we won both, and then my dad came in to play with you, and then you had to leave mid-game for a call. That's right. I remember do that? remember that. That's right. Okay, so, I'm surprised you remember because you know, you're a busy man. So you're always and, you're always leaving for calls. Yeah, so but the very few any... times that I get to play on the courts now, I remember the few times I get out there. Yeah, yeah work kind of takes over. Were you one of the founders of Pickleball Kingdom? <laughs> uh, I was not one of the founders. Uh, Ace Rodriguez um, is the founder of mm -hmm. Pickleball Kingdom. Uh, he and I met early on uh, before the facility was built. Uh, I, he made the announcement that a pickleball indoor facility was coming, mm -hmm. and so I reached out to him. And uh, really, our relationship took off right away. You know, had great conversations with each other. Idea was to come in as a you know director of pickleball um, but the facility wasn't even open yet you know yeah. so um that was in november of 2021 his when we first met uh, and it opened up may of 2022 um he and i reconnected in june and uh it was just one of those stars aligned at, the, at all the right time and we came together and it just really took off and so and that's the only location yes? it is it's our first location now in fact uh, we just launched franchising a few months ago yeah. and we have awarded a number of franchises across the nation uh dallas uh we just awarded uh one in college station a, oh, cool. a texas a&m i was going nice. so wisconsin uh we've got some excitement coming up in florida washington california uh, Michigan, you know, what are the, so. I mean, what are the stipulations? If someone wanted to be a franchise, what do they have to, what do they have to meet as far as requirements? Uh, so, um, well, money, they got to have sure. a little bit of money in there that they can come to the table with, you know, we have a franchise fee, you know, mm -hmm. that they got to pay. Um, but you know, we're starting to see so many people jump into this just cause they see where it's going. The well, it's growth packed every is, time is, I'm there, there's going. never an open court. It's always packed. Yeah. It's uh well, yeah, it, it's just, it's one of those things that throughout the day, you know, depending on the time of day, we'll have people that reserve courts and we have a lot of drop in time that people come play. But um, yeah, it's just pushing forward, you know, and Ace having the vision of going indoor, mm -hmm. you know, with this. Oh yeah. And just, I mean, there's no ball more affected by wind than that pickleball, you know? And so you never realize how windy Arizona is and play pickleball outdoors. And I mean, the you know, heat it's, and, it's and the a heat factor yeah, for sure. Heat, sun, rain, you know, bird, Crap on the ground. You come Haboobs. Haboob. We did see a boob the other day <laughs> come through. Uh, but it just takes all those elements out. And people really just start to understand the concept of, you know, we're dealing with free versus pay. Mm -hmm. You know, well, if you want 74 degrees in the summer, you're going to have to pay for it to come in and do sure. it. You know, yeah. but people are starting to see the benefit of it. You know, it, it is clean. You know, they have the ability to reserve courts. Uh, we're out there on the public courts. You really can't, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but at the same time, you also have the community go back to the community. You know, yeah. they love it. You know, we have other facilities opening up around us and our members go to them and so on. And, and we have a lot just come back and say, it's just it's not the same because at Pickleball Kingdom, we believe in the experience, you know, and when you walk in, we're the, you know, the first thing that people, you know, when they hear when they first come in is welcome to the kingdom. You know, that's, we want them to feel that, you know, and is that your, your, your wife works with you? She does. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lady J. Yeah. yeah. That's Lady so J. cool. Yep. She works with She's me. She's awesome. I had to hire her so I could spend time with her, you know, so <laughs> uh, we learned out quickly that that was going to be all that, what we needed to do. And yeah, she's our front desk manager and has just been a, you know, 
people love her. You yeah. know, and she's just a good face when people come in and uh, it really knows what she's doing. And, yeah. and this is her first time really dealing with adults. She's always dealt with children and um, the kind of she, uh, uh, people that have had mental issues and stuff like that. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, she's just wanted to kind of behind the scenes, kind of step back. But this is her first time to really jump out there and she's on an amazing job. Well, it's so much fun. It's not just the, we talked about men and women, but it's it's the age gap too. I mean, you're, you're talking about everyone from every walk of life can come in and, and do this. Oh, absolutely. It's really one of the, it's the only thing that I think of that comes to mind that that actually is the case. It is. And you're not only that, but you got your relationships, you know, your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, or, you know, whatever your choice is. Mm -hmm. They, they come out as a couple and what other sports really out there? Can you really go something with your significant other on the courts? <laughs> not you <know>? golf. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You're not Very rarely. Basketball. I mean, so it's just a sport that's so unique in the sense that yeah. and you can do that with each other and have a great time. Yeah. As far as the franchise goes, do you see this going in a direction of like a top golf where it's not just the pickleball? There's other things that are going on in the Food. facility. Food, bar. like games, bar, yeah, sure. things like that. So that's yeah. already happened. You okay. know, you have different groups out there. Like I'll, I'll mention Chicken and Pickle, for example. I've heard about that one. Yeah, so they're out based out of Kansas City. They just put a location <laughs> over in Pickle. Glendale. But they're more like the top golf of pickleball, okay. or where they have their entree is chicken and wings and beer and all that kind of stuff. But they also have pickleball, and they've got cornhole, and they've got other things around. And so they yeah. do a good job as far as that um, part of it. You know, Pickleball Kingdom, we are a – Pickleball only. Well, we've our entree is pickleball, you know, but we have some beer, wine, drinks, you know, some food items you can do. Um, but entree is pickleball, and awesome. that's what brings people there. And so, yeah, so we do have some places like that, but yeah. our focus is this. Very cool. Yeah. It's more of a training facility type of a vibe. I mean, you don't. Have... You got both, yeah, because yeah. we have you know coaches that they can come in and do that. You know, we have a a pickleball one on one class that we do twice a day, every day. That's free. You know, people can go on our website, pickleballkingdom.com. Uh, you can jump on there and you go on to Pickleball 101, select it, select the day that you want to come in and you can take the class for free and you start to learn the game. And then majority of the people that take this class have never done Pickleball in their life. Mm -hmm. And so they know nothing other than indoor Pickleball. Yeah. And so why would they leave? In fact, we had a guy that sent his mom in to take the class. He plays at some local courts outside, wanted mom to come out. She never played. So she comes in and takes the class. Next thing you know, she joins the club. A month later... Who's in the club? Her son is <laughs> now in the club. He asked her to come out and play. She's like, why would I play outside? You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Come in here. So yeah. now they're both members in the club. So yeah, I just think that's the direction that the sport's going. There is a certain level of physicality to the game. And like everything else, people can either take that seriously or really not at all. What sort of training would you say accompanies the game the best i mean what would you say as far as strength conditioning i mean has you have you ever dove into obviously you're a fit guy you do something other than just pickleball no this is pickleball body <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is this is how it works yeah it's an amazing sport do it <laughs> uh as far as the physicality well again uh, i kind of go back to it's a sport for anyone Okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had a gentleman about six months ago came in as a nutritionist, 65 year old nutritionist came in to look at the facility. We have a location in the club that you can look and you can see the entire thing, you know, the four front four courts, 11 courts in the back. And it was during prime time. So it was busy. Mm -hmm. And I, I was talking to him and I look over at him and his mouth is just, just open. And I'm like, pretty impressive, huh? And he, and he goes, I am in love. He says, the demographics in here are ridiculous mm -hmm. from young kids to, he says, this is my clientele, everybody here. You know, we have, there was a, a lady on one of the courts that was kind of heavy set, you know, and, but out there playing, having fun, you know, mm -hmm. he says, you can't find this in a movie or athletic uh, sport anywhere other than this. He can't think of anything. So he was mm -hmm. excited. So it's, uh, it, it is encouraged that people, you know, try to stretch out and, you know, do the best they can to be physically fit for this. But again, it's getting people off of couches and mm -hmm. they're now moving, moving. And so mm -hmm. you, the kind of a little bit of downside to it, you do see our, uh, health kind of insurance, you know, people talking about all the injuries and stuff that happen. Well, these people are coming off and they haven't stretched out for a while. You know, they haven't done something, but yeah. now they're getting back in. Also, and there's a pole or they, and going backwards and falling is one of the big ones. But yeah, because it's, yeah. I mean, it's fast. You're very, very lateral. You're, it's very quick. Obviously, right. there's hand eye to it. And a lot of the people that don't move are still amazing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of, I'm sure 
I bending know, just, at the waist and not at the knees like yeah a lot of stuff like that that's yeah yep. i mean i see a lot of application as a i mean as a sports scientist i see i like like oh he should probably learn how to hinge better oh she should probably be a little bit more flexible like there's there's a lot of accompanying movements beyond just playing the game oh absolutely you know and one of the things i tell individuals like yourself you know who have a fitness background or industry or something you're working with as well as physical therapists massage therapists everybody learn the game of pickleball this is your next clientele for the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. These are the people you're going to be seeing. You got to understand the motions, the movements, what can improve on it. You know, um, your swing, you know, pickleball is games played out in front. So you're, you're playing in front of you, side to side motions that you're doing. You know, so your body has mechanically ways that it needs to move mm -hmm. correctly. And if you can start to train things that way and really develop these training programs, they are going to want to come to you and learn. Yeah. You know, you know, coaching, you know, I have never seen people come to me in such a way to learn how to the game you know there's so many text messages i would get i just don't want to suck you know <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm. help me out i want to fit into my group i want to yeah. fit in with my people i need to learn something real quick or you know don't tell my husband i want to learn so i can kick his butt you know i get those messages <laughs> you know and so it's just it's unique in the sense that people are willing to go out and spend money to get better at something mm -hmm. you know that they feel accepted you know mm -hmm. in their groups and it's, yeah, it's just seen you know, a great, great transition there. And so I encourage y'all learn this sport. You know, if you're in any kind of fitness or health industry, learn mm -hmm. what this is. And I think yeah. you made a great point. I had read articles too. They're sensationalized. It's like, oh, injuries are on the rise and they try to paint pickleball as yeah. this dangerous sport. But what I, you know, talking about earlier, you could pick the game up quick. It's a low barrier to entry. I think there's a lot of people that have been sitting around sedentary for some time and they go, well, I can do this. You know, they're not going out if they went out and played flag football, you know, they're, they're not they're going to clearly probably injure themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I like about pickleball is is I'd stop playing flag football because the last time I did, I pulled my hamstring and I was like, I'm, see, yeah, it's just too demanding. Mm -hmm. This sport isn't as demanding on your body. You still have to do you know, make athletic moves and the people that are at the top of their game are extremely athletic. Um, but you can also, you know, you, you have a little bit of lateral movement forward, backward, but for the most part, you know, a lot of times it's the hand eye coordinations where a lot of that movement's happening, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're up upright at the kitchen. So, um, it is a very safe sport. It's just bringing in people that haven't been as active maybe mm -hmm. in the past. And now they're going, well, they're looking at it saying I can do that and they can, but you know, their bodies are getting used to movement mm -hmm. again. So I saw those articles and, and of course the first time I read them, I'm thinking, Oh man, well, it seems like a pretty safe sport. Well, then I started playing it. I'm like, it is a very safe sport. It's just attracting a wide base, Correct. You know, a wide yeah. audience. And that's why you're seeing the injuries is because some of these people haven't maybe done anything athletic for the last five, six, seven years. 10, that, that 20, 20, 20, 20, 30, yeah, that'd be yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah. It's, a magnet. it's a magnet for the, for the inactive. Yeah. It's, it should be a magnet for everybody, but they're included in that because like you said, anybody can just go in and do it. Right. There's a really cool company. Um, I'm going to send you this there. It's called a uh, reflection. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an AI based hand eye coordination thing. They just created a, a thing for the Oculus and it creates a simulation whereby you have these these targets that you have to hit at a certain time like it's 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 got a huge bandwidth for obviously for sports science but it directly pertains to this cool. it, it goes there's a lot of stuff like that that i think really will partner well with pickleball mm -hmm. and i think it's good because a lot of times people won't train if they don't have a direct reason to train they just won't they're like why why would i get a trainer like i i i this is it for me. But now, now you have a reason to go on, not pull your hamstring, not tweak your back. Like right. you need to be working in your planes of motion, transverse sagittal frontal. You need to be working with somebody who can actually help you stay strong and functional. Yeah. And I think even beyond that point, there's a lot of data coming out on um, prevention of Alzheimer's with racket sports, like because you're perceiving what you're going to do um, and then you're actually acting it out and then you're moving into position for the next shot, shot. So it activates a lot of different parts of your brain and they've correlated that to like uh, dementia, Alzheimer later on in life. And so mm -hmm. it really activates your brain and keeps your brain active throughout your experience playing pickleball i think it's pretty cool not just the physical effects but the effects on your 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 brain health over a long period of time absolutely in fact we have a one of our uh, members um she has parkinson's and uh, she's been playing pickleball now for the last two years and the change in her herself just because of that hand eye coordination with the you know everything going on they're seeing that there is uh, some benefit to it and so uh, she's working with a group right now that um, we're kind of touch base with here and there that we may do a study 
you know, uh, for Parkinson's, you know, uh, the, for the Parkinson's disease of sure. how this will benefit and how it will, you know, help people improve. And so absolutely, you know, it's definitely something that can be a positive in all, in a lot of different areas. Yeah. I read an article on the power of play, which also I think directly pertains to the reversal or at least, you know, stagnation of Alzheimer's and that sort of thing. I mean, the activities we did when we were kids just to, you know, be enjoyed had a real reason in our development and in our development phase we kind of stop once we reach our midlife especially we stop we stop playing we stop doing those types of things when our usually it's because our body shut down mm -hmm. usually you reach 40 you're like man i really liked playing beach volleyball but i can't do that i can't do that anymore <laughs> darn and that's it that's the end of the conversation <laughs> having this is a way to re-engage that same spark mentally the art of it, the activity of playing something mm -hmm. physical and competitive is something i don't think ever really goes away from us unless we let it right. and by engaging in this activity you can do it in a way that is at least you know semi safe right out of the gate sure yeah and your and your barrier to entry is low and, and you can get back into that same type of mindset you were when you were a kid absolutely you know and i think and it's interesting you see the stories of people coming out and playing and it's Oh, I, it just feels good to get back out again. You know, mm -hmm. those endorphin boosts, you know, that you get when you're out there and you're doing something and then, you know, life gets better, you know? So yeah. it, it's, it is a story that is constant all the time that we hear, you know, people just, you know, changing their life. You know, people come out losing weight. You know, we've got a number of members in the club that are upwards of 70 and 80 pounds dropped in the last five, six months. Wow. It's just crazy wow. just being out there. And you know, we've got one gentleman in the club right now that had, uh, diabetic, he'd, you know, take medications for diabetes. He'd go get his hair cut. He'd fall asleep in the chair. You know, he's now dropped over 70 pounds, no longer has to take diabetic medications, you know, it's changed his life completely, it's awesome. you know, and now didn't have many friends. You know, he's now got a group and a following sets up round robins with players, mm -hmm. you know, so it is, it's his life and it's made a big impact on him. That's so great. It's really it's awesome. Cool. Clay, what was your big attraction to doing this project? I mean, obviously you could have done anything. What, why, why do this? Well, so I think how it all came together was kind of serendipitous in that um, mm -hmm. I actually met Ace through a friend that I met when I came out here and started getting involved in mental health. So I started going to these conferences and that's where I met one of Ace's friends. And so then I went and hung out with her and her family, had dinner with them, just got to know them. And it was, that was, that's all it was. We were just kind of interacting with one another and she had known about my background a little bit. Um, and it just was like kind of my family away from home. Uh, and so then one day, you know, she was talking to Ace and, and he had mentioned, you know, that he was doing this, this, uh, this, this pickleball paddle battle mm -hmm. game show and uh, reality TV show. And, uh, she goes, well, do you have a host? And he was like, no, I, I not, not, no, we don't. And she's like, well, you know, there's a guy that's that I know. He's uh, he's a really cool dude. You should you should talk to him. <laughs> right. And uh, and it was funny. She just texted me and she goes, "Hey, I I I, uh, I don't I hope you are okay. I threw you know your name in the ring for this this little, like uh, I think you should have a conversation if you'd like to." And and so I was like, "Yeah, what is it?" And so she told me she's well, she wasn't entirely sure, but she's like, "I think it'd be cool." Like, and so if you would you know go have a conversation. And I and for me, I'm I mean I'm big into just physical activity and and, mm -hmm. and team sports and. Uh, and so I thought, you know, this, if something kind of, it just, it felt right to at least have the conversation. Um, so then Ace and I sat down and he walked me around the complex and showed me everything. He told some stories that, you know, uh, David shared here today about people changing their lives. Um, and then him and I, he played college ball, football. Um, so we connected on that front. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we connected on f our faith. Uh, and by the end of it, you know, he, he said, listen, I, I just feel right about moving forward i don't know what that looks like because this is all really new to all of us mm -hmm. but let's just have another conversation so um that's what it came down to is it just I, I was getting good vibes and i felt like you know i'm in this environment where i'm seeing people uh, you know changing their lives having fun um and there it seems like there's there's no judgment there's it's it's everyone's growing together and it just was positive energy really mm -hmm. And I'm all about that nowadays. I, it's, you know, sometimes the people that, you know, I grew up with are saying I went full Hollywood, but, you know, cause I'm all woo woo at points, but I do really believe in the energy transfer. And I really, I just felt that I'm like, I'm around a bunch of people that are super positive and I just want to be a part of this atmosphere. Um, and, you know, and I want to change lives too. And I want to be a part of this growth uh, because when you, when others grow around you, you grow as well. You know, you hear their testimonies 
and and you become a better person and that energy just bounces back and forth so it just felt right and then the more i dove into it i was like this is gonna be fun you know it's something new we're all just kind of spitballing just i mean well, I, sh I shouldn't say spitballing you guys are the masterminds you guys got this whole thing dialed in but it's it's new and exciting um and it's yeah. something where you're like where does it go wherever it's meant to go um, it seems to mesh really well with what you've already been doing. Yeah. I mean, mental health, you mm -hmm. know, that being a push, it definitely has a certain facet of it that goes right along with that. Yeah. And that was where the majority of our conversation with uh, Ace and I, it was all mental health focused. And, and, and I realized it was like, you know, he really was passionate about it. I was passionate about it. And then what this sport could do for someone's physical and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just felt right. That's what it boiled down to. But I, I find it so fascinating how, you know, it really started with a conversation conversation with one of his friends, uh, just meeting at a mental health conference. And then here we are. And so, uh, for everything that I stand for, it just fell directly in line, mm -hmm. um, where I'm like, this is, this is the right place, right time. So uh, Heck yeah. I've jumped in and I've played horrendous, you know, pickleball <laughs> you know, matches. I mean, I'm absolutely terrible, but I, I even told him, I, I, I even told him the last time I played, I said, I came in here happy and I left frustrated. You can see the change happen over the whole, yeah. the time. I'm like, oh no, I'm losing him. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, start, he's starting to get in his head, you know, he's starting to. Well, and to his point though, I mean, there are people, including myself, who I stopped playing you know, professional football at 2016. And then I stopped in 2021 playing, you know, any type of, I was like, no more flag football. I'm done. I injured myself. Mm -hmm. So I was out, you know, I mean, I was just lifting weights, but I, there's no longer the competitive spirit. I wasn't really fulfilling it. I was just, you yeah. know, it's just mono. It's just one on it's yourself. And when you're lifting weights, it's just you versus you, which is great, but I wasn't having that competitive spirit with others. And so and camaraderie yes. and sense of yeah. team, you yes. know what I mean? It's, training is training yeah. right. but that's what happens is all of a sudden you you get those juices flowing again and that's where the ego wants to you know jump in j jump in and be like i'm the best i want to be the best and i used to be like oh, i'm not really concerned about that but once i let it go it bubbled back up without me even realizing <laughs> so now i'm looking at you know whoever diane who's double my age across from me i'm like you're about to get uh, you know, a fast Diane. <laughs> it's, going, it's, it's going down. It's just going to be like that scene and meet the parents. Just a game, father. Yeah. Just a game. <laughs> yeah. Very quickly, you go from being like, oh, she, you know, I got to probably play it a little bit lighter, easier for her. And then all of a sudden, they smoke one at you. You're like, oh, okay, is that how you want to do yeah, this? Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah. Diane. Yeah. So it's um, yeah. it brought it back out of me. And that's where I realized I was like, yeah, I need this. I mean, I still want to work, for, work towards something. Everybody needs that thing they wake up to and say, what do I want to get better at? And I mean, I try to add a multitude of things, but sports is another thing where it's like, you just, you know, I want to get better. But while you're there playing the game, it's so much more than just the game. Like you yeah. said, you're meeting people, you know, and then you're, you're talking, you're communicating. And sometimes those conversations, you know, one conversation changes the entire trajectory of your life. And I've, since I've been in the, you know, in the kingdom, I have heard the conversations of people, you know, and they're diving deeper than just talking pickleball. You know, they're starting to talk about their families. They're starting to talk about, you know, what this game has done for them. And you realize, like, this isn't just a sport. This isn't just, like, pickleball only. This isn't a community. And this is growth. And it's happening everywhere. And because I think just the proximity of the game, too. I mean, you said four. I didn't know that. But four pickleball courts can fit in one tennis court. I think when you have players, you know, that are so spread out, just the difference being in, like, close proximity. When you're up at that, you know, the, up at the kitchen, you know, that's, that's what, you're 14 feet apart because it's seven on each side, right? Yep. So you're 14 feet apart. So there's four, four, four people within 14 feet. Look at him knowing the rules and the, <laughs> the, the dimensions been, and everything. Reading, this is really reading. good. I've been reading. Go, so, keep going. So, but I think just that <laughs> proximity standing so close, I mean, that that even makes a difference because you're mm -hmm. you're not spread apart. So therefore, like that, you re you don't, without realizing it, you're, you're building these connections because you're just in such close physical proximity. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have different things with the game where everyone's touching paddles. So, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you're that it's that physical touch, which we all know like bonds individuals as well. Mm -hmm. And so that, I thought that was a really cool staple of the game where I'm like, Oh, no matter how you know how much you lost by everyone at the end, just goes straight up to, you know, to the net. And then everyone just, you know, touches paddles. Mm -hmm. And it's that, 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 that bonds people with like, okay, even when like we're playing a game, we can still be good. You know, there's good sportsmanship. So yes, yeah. it's, it's funny you bring that up because there's something right now in the pickleball world of, you know, whether they want to take out that, Okay. The paddle touch, you know, take it out. Take, don't take it out. Players like, <laughs> take it what out. other sport do you have where you 
at the end of a game you come and you, you, you tap paddles. You know, you don't see that. You know, at the at halftime or basketball or anything, you, you don't like go high five each other at halftime. You know, you go to your bed, you go to your lockers. You know, <laughs> and so there, you know, there's some pros out there that are talking that they want to take it out and everything. But, um, but you're right in the sense of I agree. The whole idea behind that is we're good. You know, win, lose, draw, whatever it is, you can come together and, mm-hmm. and you know, touch battles and game's over. And whether you had a bad game, good game, and that's it. You know, again, that community, that that social aspect mm-hmm. of it is big. On, on that line, I had a question for you. Being doubles partners with your spouse, is that a good thing or a bad <laughs> thing? Okay, so um, I've had many spouses come to me for lessons, you know, yeah. and, I, and I tell them, okay, so my price for the first hour to teach you pickleball is this. For the second hour, it's double because we're going to talk about counseling, talk about how to work together with your partner, you know, on this. So it can be detrimental at times. You know, I, I try to teach them to work together. I mean, boy, it's a tough one. You yeah. know, it, it is a tough one. You've got to be able to not point the finger, do it in a certain way. Uh, <laughs> to just accept that you're going to make mistakes and you ain't perfect yourself, you know. And I say that for both people, but mostly talking to the guy, Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> about yep. it. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So there's there's always that uh, question in there is can you play with your spouse? Um, if you're the same level, it helps. <clears throat> Excuse me, it helps. But um, I've only seen very few make it work. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I totally believe it too. Great. Yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna openly berate a stranger who's playing as a doubles partner and they make a mistake you're gonna be like it's cool it's, it's cool, cool. You're all right it's like a video i sent you. yeah <laughs> you know like the like the one you sent he said a video comparing when spouses play together versus when strangers play together i was like it's okay I've you got that. it man i've you seen, seen that video that. so yeah, oh, it's, that one. Thought, like, like towards his wife he's like if you do that again yeah, we're getting a divorce <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, yep. but it's a it's a great game. I think you guys got something really special going. Uh, it's awesome that it's happening here in Scottsdale. Um, so, psyched to be a part of it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If, yeah. if somebody wants to get, I mean, I assume you've already chosen your sixteen applicants. Not yet. So Chandler, when we're in Chandler, um, it's the everything ends tomorrow evening. So August sixteenth at midnight. Okay. Are the final submissions that we're going to accept, select or, or accept? Okay. Um, you know, you might want to do a post about that uh, on your page and uh, maybe on yours as well, because this episode won't go live for another couple months, probably. Correct. So that so, little video I did prior to, yeah, that's posting now, just pushing that cool. out and, cool. and on that. So yeah. But uh, if if people want to get involved, if they want to go to the kingdom, if they want to watch the show, where where would all of that? Happen? So right now we're going to be doing YouTube. You know, as the way we're doing it, uh, we uh, when we first started talking about doing this, the idea obviously what's to have the YouTube channel. So um, we're creating it. Right, it'll probably pick up. Oh, so it's, it's yeah. not it's not open. Not yet. open okay. yet. No, no you. channel oh, open yet on there. Is this year? That would must have been yours. This or? was. Uh, <laughs> no, that's the <laughs> now. <laughs> um, somebody building Legos, lingerie, yeah, or something. Lego, <laughs> yeah, long, Legos and lingerie. Shockingly, no, a large number of girls doing that. <laughs> a lot of. I love how specific that was. Just when you <laughs> said that, I'm like, okay, that's a thing, but what's not a thing these right. days? Oh, it's, it's a great yeah. thing. Yeah. It's like every who doesn't love yeah. Legos. And my, my explore page <laughs> is about to change. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> back in a week, I'm like Clinton, he's out here building Lego castles. Where, where did this come from? <laughs> So, so we'll post it there, you know, uh, pickleball yeah. paddle TV. People go look at things. And then again, um, our goal, we, we already have five seasons written up. Uh, oh, wow. Ready to roll. Oh, so sick. We're and you're hoping, on board wow. for like kind of the long, the long run here. Well, I think there we're just, we're just going with the day. I know my role is, is like, let's just see where this thing goes. I mean, I would love to be in it for the long haul, Yeah. but of course, like, I mean, hosting, it's a new thing for me. Right. So I'm, I'm excited. And my buddy, Jesse Palmer from the show, like I was just with him a couple weeks ago, I was asking for some pointers and you know, I'm like, cause he's the, you know, he's the host of the bachelor. So I'm like, Hey, what do you, you know, what should I be focusing on? And so I've been watching, I've been watching pickleball games, you know, I've been listening to the announcers. I, I've. So hopefully, I mean, again, like I'm treating this, everything that I do, I try to do 100%. Oh, my favorite. So my my goal is to hopefully be the best host I can be and then go from there. Just watch, just watch Dodgeball a couple times and just recreate that and just be the greatest thing ever. Just Just throw wrenches at people. Uh, 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 Jason Bateman. uh, uh, It wasn't, Cotton was the other one and his name was... um, Cotton. Cotton was the other. What was his name? I, I can never remember. You know who I'm talking about. I do. No, yeah. I, I told it's you not to with movie, movie okay, reference. Dodgeball. The this is Dodgeball. You've yeah. seen Dodgeball. Is that which is movie? Movie? He's talking about dodging a wrench. Isn't that? Yes. 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 Y
<laughs> but yes, you need to you need to go back. You need to go tonight, and you need to watch dodgeball. And you need okay. to watch the the hosts of the dodgeball tournament there. Good. And when I implement Solid that game. and get fired, I know where I'm coming back to. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'll have a cool gym to work out at. Heck yeah, man! Yeah. Always. Well, guys, thank you so, so much for coming on. That Appreciate was great. It. A lot of fun. Um, let's let's just call it there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming in so much. This was yeah. fun. Yeah. That was fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for watching that episode of Becoming the 1% Podcast. If you like the content and you want to see more of it, hit the like and subscribe. Activate that notification bell as well. We really appreciate it. If you guys want to see more of it, we actually have the Becoming the 1% Instagram and the podcast is available on Spotify. For our socials, we have Strict Vision Athletics on Instagram. We have it on YouTube and we have it on TikTok.